Hey YouTube, here's Heiko. Today we're in front of my garage and I have a really cool lawnmower here sitting next to me. which uh, nothing is really wrong with. I'm just doing an annual inspection on it, oil change, you know, blade sharpening, cleaning and all that. Just wanted to show you, I kind of like this uh, model. It's a little larger, a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more capable than your average Home Depot lawnmower. And uh, I'm just gonna take you along during my little annual inspection. It's gonna start with me pressure washing it. Then, I might have to call it quits for today because I have a, another project over there that might also need some pressure washing. And I'm gonna for sure record that as well. Here, let me just pan over that direction real quick. Uh, sneak peek. All right, now the lawnmower. It's that beast. So 30 inches, this has two blades. It's a 10 horsepower overhead valve, um, 223, yeah, 223 cc's. And uh, let's see if we can actually make this start. My Spark Tester 3000, how Vice Grip Garage would call it. Come on. I kind of feel like I'm going to have bleeding knuckle. No, no, that worked. All right, and you just stick that in between the spark plug and the spark plug cap. You guys watch this thing, okay? I don't know if I can see it from here. Yeah, I can. All right, lever down and oh yeah, there's spark. Absolutely. So then it's a fuel issue. I guess it's not going to be an easy startup. I actually have to uh, fiddle with a, f a carburetor first. That's kind of disappointing. I thought we we're going to get this started like right away. Um, you know what? Startup fluid. So you literally only have to pull this lever. I don't even know. Is this a start release? Is this a lever that makes our ignition work no it isn't let's see here where does this cable go this goes into the gearbox looks like so this lever hand lever up here on the handle which you at the moment can't see this one here on any other mower this would be uh, disconnecting a little kill switch and actually take a break off of your flywheel to be able to start it. But I guess this one here really doesn't have that. This is one of those uh, modulated personal pace self-propelled systems. So the more you push the handle in, the faster the mower will move. Um, let's see if we can pull start it without this lever. I guess this one start was all it needed uh, to get running. So now we're just going to pressure wash this. This is actually what I wanted to do today. 
So you guys watch me brush a wash, okay? Water on. Hundred fifty percent better. Um, usually the underside, I don't pressure wash because uh, the grass clippings in conjunction with water just turns into this mush, and then you have that sitting on your driveway for like the next fifty years. Um, I rather scrape and brush off everything, so that's what I'm going to do when when I take the blades off to sharpen them. Uh, but yeah, it starts, runs, is. Top side is clean. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to do an oil change and blade sharpening. Uh, lubrication of all the cables. I always lubricate all the cables because they are really expensive. Like $30, $40 for one stinking cable. Uh, doesn't seem to have any issues. The drive works. It's rear wheel drive. This is a really nice mower. I really like it. So anyways, tomorrow. Now let's get to the other one. The other project. This is the mower that we already pressure washed yesterday. Today I just want to finish up, uh, not finish up, do the annual inspection. So as I was um, giving it a little bit of some starter fluid yesterday, I noticed that the air filter is pretty um, not oily or anything that you often see. I just, there's a lot of debris in there. For now I'm just going to blow it out, but I think I will go ahead and buy a new filter for this one. I already got my air gun around here. Yeah. came up with it's literally Harbor Freight a tiny little pair of vice grips uh, that have like a needle nose and I just put a piece of old fuel line over top of those jaws so there's no sharp edges and then you can take it and just clamp down on a fuel line and it's gonna pinch it shut but it's not gonna damage it like like so, clip, and now we can take the float ball off. We're just working on the ground here today, no big deal. Absolutely clean. I don't know why it wouldn't want to start up in the first place. There's some air. Uh, the bottom uh, little bolt is actually a jet. So that needs to be cleaned out. But there's absolutely nothing in this in the bottom of the carb. It's absolutely clean. Clean fuel, no problem. So I don't think we need to really worry about it. Once this lawnmower gets used regularly, and some fuel goes through it, it's going to be just fine. And then I just noticed that 
this engine has no drain uh, drain plug at the bottom at least not as far as I can tell and uh, tipping this large machine with a filler port the filler neck right up here we would be making a huge mess so what I'm going to try to do is I have a 50 milliliter large syringe and we're going to try to extract here's a syringe long hose we're going to extract or at least try to extract the oil out of this engine let's see if we can make that happen So I just looked it up, um, 23 fluid ounces, is that correct, or 28? 28. So I have a measuring cup in ounces, and now we're going to take the oil that we sucked out and pour it in here and see how much we've gotten. So I don't want to take any risks, risk other people's equipment, just because I'm Ah, uh, this is only eight ounces. So that's definitely not enough. So we have to do something else. I guess we kind of have to take the risk of making a mess. Here's my lowest catch can that I have. I'm going to turn that around so you guys can see a little better. I still have the dipstick out. The dipstick is going to be the opening that we're going to try to pour the oil out of. And we just have to aim. So roughly that line. Can you guys see? There. So, and uh, moving it out a little bit so the tire doesn't interfere with it. Let's see. Right in here is the drain plug, right near the, the pulley there. Before you take that out, you got to make sure it's clean around there. So you're not getting grime, dirt and debris into the opening. And then this here is just a 3 8 extension. I might get a longer one, you know. So like I said, 3 8 extension fits right into the square of this drain plug. Make sure you don't tip your lawnmower over in the process and then just take it loose. And then I hope we're not going to get oil out of this immediately. Because I would like to tip it over on top of a drain catch can to catch the... let it drip out for quite some time now so that's it it actually works really well with my AutoZone drip can it's just the perfect height to fit under this mower without being crushed um, I closed the uh, dipstick opening 
Now we're just going to tip it over to the side again. Without letting it fall. And uh, so I, I verified the oil amount one more time. Um, it's not 28 fluid ounces, it's just 18. I went by model number and all that onto the Bricks and Stratton webpage where you can look all those things up. And again, make sure you have your um, spark plug out. No. Nope. Um, what is it? Is it three quarter? No. Never. Half inch. Five eighths, maybe. Oh yeah, five eighths it is. That worked too. So there is this washer that kind of grabs into the sp uh, spindle here. And then on the other side of the washer are two pins that grab into the blade. And people always, I've seen so many mowers where the blades are installed the wrong way. Um, it's kind of a dead giveaway when you look at the, the grind of the actual blade. So you want the sloped section upwards, so the flat side of the blade down. And then this, this swoop up here is really only to accelerate the, the clippings through your chute out the machine. That's what it's for. So I'm just going to leave this here on here. And leave that on here too. So for the sharpening job, we only need this little balancer that you can buy at most, you know, like Tractor Supply, uh, Cal Wrench, tool stores, and my cordless angle grinder. What I usually do, I try to find the angle that this was uh, grounded, make this parallel to my workbench, and then... Clean all the, the little nicks. Because uh, the sharper you make it, the quicker it dulls. Then you put this on this little balancer and if one side falls down then this side is heavier and then you have to remove more material on that little on that heavy side so this is a little heavier than this so we're just gonna grind a little more side really you should almost leave alone only if you have uh, like burrs and nicks sticking or the 
material sticking out to flatten it out. But the grinding you always want to do from the top side and then always towards the outside. So if you reduce the shape of this, this blade, it should go like this. You, sh you shouldn't try to keep it parallel because then you are thinning uh, the blade here in this section and then you can have pieces break off. So you're always grinding off the outside edge. And this is really uh, the part of the blade that cuts the most. That looks good. And then this puppy here. That looks good too. So since we're at it with the cleaning, Let's just clean this up a little bit. It looks like um, my friends who own this machine. That's interesting. They seem to be mulching with this machine, so they're not catching. They're not wobbling, so that looks good. Now we can give it a bit of a blow out here. You guys stand back. I decided to uh, torque the blades. I looked it up, 82 newton meters or 60 foot-pounds. Let's see how we can make this happen. <laughs> like that. Okay, and now we're going to do the second one. 82 newton meters, 60 foot-pounds. All right, that's that. So I can sleep better at night knowing that the blade's not going to come off. All right. Yeah, we were a little interrupted. Had to pick up the kids from school. I don't like to leave machines sitting unfinished, especially when it's such a nice machine, because, you know, the risk is always you forget to refill the engine oil, and then the next time you don't think about it, and then suddenly someone starts it, and then you have a catastrophic engine failure. So I brought 18 ounces in accordance to Briggs & Stratton manual, 18 ounces of 10W30. Uh, I'm not gonna put all of it in. So, um, the rain back in, we have a charging blade fix, one. We have cleaned up the tool, and we have cleaned the other one. Really, the only thing after this, after we have washed it in the lab, is a lubricating the cables that I like to do. Um, so do that, and now I'm gonna wipe this down a little bit from True Shine, and that makes it look pretty. And I can go back to uh, the customer, where in this case, you're trying to watch it. And someone remind me that I need to go to Walmart and get myself a box of rags. I keep
keep forgetting. So now I'm using all my used microfiber sheets. Well, yes, that looks pretty good. No, that's perfect. I'll check it after a quick little test run. So now lubing cables, that can be quite a task sometimes. Oh, by the way, I'm using uh, Liquid Wrench. They make chain and cable lube. Um, I just have that sitting around. It can't always last me forever. Here, for example, this one cable that you can see, pretty easy access. I have this little uh, cable lubrication tool. Uh, one side has a relatively large opening that goes over the, the sheath or the, what is it called? Yeah, the sheath of the cable. And the other side is pretty small, clamps right down on the cable. And then it has one opening where you can put a straw of one of those aerosol cans, a couple knurled knobs or knurled bolts, and you just tighten it down in the silicone sleeve in there. Oh, a sleeve, we can call it a sleeve. Tightens down on the cable, makes it more or less airtight, oil tight, aerosol can tight. And then, I hate my motion sensor light here in the driveway. Sun is down, I just wanna get this done. So I have it tightened down as much as I can. Then I take the straw of my aerosol can and just stick it in this one hole that's on that tool and pressurize it. So you can see it's not really coming out up top or down below. And now we're gonna follow the cable where it does that go. Disappears somewhere down in the in the gearbox, so we don't need to do too much. And that lubricates the cable from top to bottom, comes out at the bottom. Uh, if I push it aside, there's probably already a drop on the ground. Yep. And uh, some cables you just can't can't do that with, because for example, this one here comes out of a formed plastic piece so I can't put my tool on there so then you end up just let me turn on the light you end up uh, just pulling it out a little bit or maybe you pull the lever here then lube it no come on now now here we go and then you just have to move it a few times Make the lubricant go into the sheath or the sleeve. Give it a couple. That will, you know, work itself down. So we're at least lubricating the upper section. We're probably not going to be able to get uh, lubricant all the way through the cable, which is kind of sad. And this thing really only has two control cables. One is for the gear drive, the, no, no, no. What is this lever for? Oh, I know. It engages the, the blade drive. So you can start the motor without the blade spinning. And then you pull this lever and the blade starts spinning. Oil level we need to check one more time to make sure. We have enough oil in there. Now after running, like I said, they are splash lubricated. They have no pump, no filter. So the oil doesn't really go anywhere. It's just being slung around. I really like that stuff. Trim shine. Trim shine makes all the like plastic parts shine at least for the first week. And then everyone is always happy when they see their freshly serviced lawnmower looking not like new but clean and shiny.
all right guys that's it for tonight signing off give me a thumbs up and subscribe please take care bye